Hey guys, welcome back to Embers and Ash. My name's Ashley, if you didn't know, and today we're talking about mom hacks. I haven't done a mom hacks video in a bit of time, and I guess for good reason, because it takes me a bit of time to learn hacks to be able to share them with you guys. So today's hacks are more geared towards the six to 12 month range, just because that's the age my child is. So obviously that's kind of what my experience is gonna be. Some of them though are good for basically any age of baby. So if you're not in that range, you're fine. You'll still get some value out of this. So yeah, I have 10 hacks for you guys. I feel like they're gonna be very helpful because like always, they've been life-changing for me. But before I get into the hacks, I gotta thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. They have classes on everything from minimalism, photography, house plants, productivity, graphic design, and and also parenthood. It's made specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and they're always adding new premium classes, so you can be sure that there's skills to learn and passions to deepen. I've really been enjoying their classes on parenthood lately as I've been entering the world of toddlers. <laughs> the class that I've specifically been loving is Your Home Organized, A Busy Parent's Guide to Getting Organized Once and For All by Rachel Rosenthal. Sounds like everything I need. <laughs> she goes over how to create a command center for your home for things like schedules, to-do lists, and general need-to-knows, how to organize your kitchen, kid space, and storage spaces, all in a way that works for you and your kids. So if you're interested in joining, the first 1,000 of you guys to click the link in the description will get a free one-month trial of their premium membership so you can start exploring your creativity today. Awesome! Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the hacks. Okay, the first hack is for when your child starts getting very wiggly and doesn't like sitting still for diaper changes. It's so tragic. Diaper changes used to be so chill and now they are stressful if you don't know how to handle them. So the hack is to have a toy rotation specifically for your diaper changes. I keep a little basket by the change pad and I pick a different toy each time to give to Rook to play with while I'm changing his diaper. Originally, I would just have one toy there that I would give to him to play with, but like everything else in his life, he gets bored of things after a while. So if I have a toy rotation, again, specifically for the diaper table, it helps a lot because if he starts getting bored with one, I can switch it out. I also try and make sure that the toys are small um, and wipeable. So if anything were to happen, I can wipe it off. And specifically, it being small, it's less likely that that toy will get into the diaper area. So that's been really helpful for me. Next up is for when your child starts eating real food. Once things started opening back up and we started going to restaurants, I realized how annoying it is trying to figure out how to feed Rook at a restaurant because when he was just starting solids, I couldn't give him like a child's meal because it was way too much food and also not necessarily safe for him. And if I ordered like an appetizer, it was like $20 or something, like way more money than I want to be spending on his food. So what I've been doing that has worked really well for me is I add a side to whatever I'm having. Yes, I could just give him some of my food, but sometimes I'm eating something that he can't eat. So if I get like a side of mashed potatoes or a side of breakfast, Brussels sprouts. Usually those are really easy go-tos that Rook can eat and he's happy with and it's only like what, $2.50 to add on to your meal as opposed to $10 for a child's meal. I'm sure eventually he'll get big enough that he'll need that much food, but right now he doesn't and it saved me a lot of money. Next up is again food related because food is a big part of a child's life between six months and I guess onwards. Um, but that is to get a spill-proof snack cup Oh boy, has this been helpful. There's a couple brands out there who make these. I'll link one in the description. Basically, it's a cup that has flaps on the top so that you can put your hand in to grab a snack, but if you were to flip the cup upside down, it's less likely that they'll spill out. Sure, some might spill, but you know that a baby's absolutely gonna just take the thing and flip it upside down, and having one or two spill versus the whole thing pour out, way better. This has also been really good for car rides. I can put those little rice snacks that are dissolvable and I feel safe having him in the back eating them. He's not gonna choke on them, um, especially at this age. So if he's falling asleep in the back seat, I can just give him this snack cup and he'll go to town. There's minimal mess, he doesn't fall asleep, 
everything's great. Next up is a hack to help reduce mess during mealtime at home. It can be very stressful giving your child things like oatmeal and yogurt, anything wet and sticky, which is most things they eat. So the hack is for one, get a smock for your child, which is like the long sleeve bib that ties behind their back. Those are great because only their hands and their mouth gets dirty, but they don't really catch any food. So the child might be clean, but everywhere else is dirty. And the major part of this hack is to tuck the bottom of that smock into the tray of the high chair or under the table, depending on what your situation and your setup is. But with my high chair, the Stokey Trip Trap, I can just lay it on top of the seat and click the tray on top and it creates a little like hammock that all the food can fall into and it doesn't get all over their legs and then onto the ground. Sure, Rook will still throw food off the side of the high chair, but it still is a lot less than the stuff that falls while he's eating. So yeah, that's been a wonderful little hack for us. Next up is for when your little one is starting to walk. Rook is just starting. He's only taking a few steps, but for a while he's been cruising all over the house and the hack is to get soft soled shoes. I didn't know that this was a thing, but apparently to help your child develop into walking, they need to be able to feel the ground for them to figure out their balance. So if you put a really hard, thick rubber sole on your child's foot, they can't feel anything. They walk around like they have paddles on their feet. It's not a good situation. If you get a soft soled shoe, like a leather bottom or faux leather bottom, they can feel what's going on, but their foot is still protected from the ground. So yeah, if you want your child to learn how to walk quicker, definitely go for the soft sole. If you don't want them to walk, don't bother. <laughs> Next up, this is one that I discovered recently and it has been so nice. So it's all about your car mirror or the car seat mirror, the one that goes above the car seat so that you can see the child in your mirror. Well, traditionally they go horizontally as you're known to use them, but I recently turned mine vertically and it is so much better. For one, I got one of the cheapo car seat mirrors because I didn't want to spend a lot of money on them. And after a couple months, it started getting really loose and it didn't like to stay upright for very long just with like the car's vibrations. So it would always fall down and I couldn't see my child. Well, when you move it vertically, the bottom kind of hits the base so it can't fall anywhere and it just stays perfectly in place that I can see my kid. The other thing is it's nice to see your child head to toe in case they've dropped something or they've taken their shoe off. It's just nice to see all of them. And I found that the horizontal version of the mirror, you could see more on either side, but it's almost like more than you need to see because when it's vertical, I can still see Rook's head at all times, even when it's like flopped to the side when he's sleeping. So. I've been loving this. I'm forever gonna be using my mirror this way. You guys should try it out if you're interested. And if you hate it, whatever. <laughs> Next up, I shared this hack on Instagram and that is garbage is your baby's best friend. There's so much stress about finding the perfect toys for your kids and I do really like getting toys that help my child's development. But at the same time, a kid doesn't know the difference between garbage and toys and most of the time my kid and a lot of other kids likes garbage more because it's new and it's weird. I definitely try and make sure the garbage is safe for playing but it's just a whole new world of toys when you can open them up to garbage. My next hack I actually got from Nicole Leela Green. Check her out, she's a wonderful motherhood YouTuber and she showed me which plate to get my baby. So there's a lot of suction plates on the market. You ideally want a suction plate for your child because they will throw that plate any way they can. But some suction plates don't work and the one that definitely does is the Avanchi plate. I haven't tried any of the others because I just went straight for this one and it is so good. Rook has never been able to take it off himself. There's a little tab on the back that you have to pull to remove the plate. He doesn't know it's there. He also can't reach it because I put the plate kind of far enough that he can't reach that and it just works great. I can put his plate down knowing that he's not gonna be able to remove it. And again, anything that minimizes cleanup is my best friend. Next thing we need to figure out is how to prevent the spoon from always falling on the ground. 
Maybe we can like tie a string to it or something. Either way, the Avanci plate is the way to go. My ninth hack for you guys is for diaper changes in public. Oh, these are so stressful because I don't have my toy rotation basket to use to distract Rook. And usually everything's new around him that he doesn't want to just lay there and get his diaper changed. And also sometimes there's people there watching, social stress, it's too much. My hack is to FaceTime a relative while you're doing the diaper change. Not that I'm FaceTiming the relative, but I FaceTime like Rachel, my sister, and I give the phone to Rook, and Rook talks and looks at Auntie Rachel while I'm changing his diaper. He doesn't really ever get to use my phone, so it's really fun and exciting for him, but I don't feel as bad because you know, he's just talking to his aunt, or at least listening to his aunt. And it's always super funny, like, I'll call Rachel and be like, Rook's diaper's getting changed, here you go! And she just chats with him for a couple minutes and we're all good. Easiest way to get through a public diaper change. So the last tip I have for you guys, I don't know why I didn't share this one earlier, because I've been doing it basically since Rook's been a newborn, maybe? I don't know, maybe this is a social norm, but it's all about the tabs on the diaper. So the tabs are very sticky, like they Velcro to the front, right? And when you take a diaper off, they kind of can go anywhere and stick anywhere and it can get very frustrating because they'll get stuck on the inside of the diaper or on the front and close it up before you're done like adding wipes inside the diaper. So it can get very frustrating. Originally, I would just kind of fold the Velcro back into itself, but then the whole back of the diaper would still collapse on itself and it was frustrating. The best thing I found was to take the tabs and Velcro them to the side, kind of the under butt section of the diaper. I'm sure I'm showing you in a clip right now. This I found keeps the diaper open while you're wiping and putting the wipes in the diaper and then they're easy to find and move once you're ready to Velcro the whole thing back up. Best way I found to do it, let me know if you guys have a different way. This is just what's working for me. I hope it can help you guys out. So yeah, those are all the tips for you guys, all the hacks. I hope these were helpful. I love making these videos, so let me know if you want more as Rook grows. The next one will probably be all about toddler life, right? So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!